Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel if you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we're going to react to Joram van Klaveren with his video Why I Left the Far Right. This will be a very fascinating video. I myself was very interested in the far right. I was never politically active. However, I sympathized with far right ideas, with nationalistic ideas. Joram van Klaveren was a far right politician that wanted to ban Islam from the Netherlands and then I bet to his own surprise converted to Islam himself. Let's have a look. 2013. Daarnaast blijkt uit onderzoek dat antisemitisme en homofoob geweld velig tieren onder Marokkanen. De legitimatie voor deze ellende, de islam. Verzoekt de regering haar angstige en politiek correcte houding ten aanzien van de islam te laten varen. En de negatieve invloed van deze kwaadaardige ideologie die moet worden tegengegaan. Verzoekt de regering de islam zoveel mogelijk uit Nederland te bannen. En gaat over tot de orde van de dag. I can totally relate to his statement because as I said multiple times here on my channel I grew up in Germany and in Germany I was faced with a lot of violence, a lot of crime coming from so-called Muslims. Most of the time they were Turkish, some Americans, Algerians and therefore I associated Islam with violence and can fully understand why Yoram here would have seen it as an evil ideology. Of course nowadays I do know that we shouldn't judge a religion by its followers but nevertheless we have to say that the followers are representative of the religion and as somebody that doesn't do any studies into theology this is all you see that was me back then this is me now i'm no longer a member of the far right ironically the thing that made me join the far right is the same thing that made me leave it was islam and this is my story my name is Joram van Klaveren and I'm a former member of, of the Dutch parliament who represented the Party for Freedom, the anti-Islamic nationalist party of Geert Wilders. For years, I gave everything I had to fight against Islam. I tried to make legislation to shut down all Islamic schools in the Netherlands. I attempted to close all mosques, ban the Koran and ban Islam altogether from the Netherlands. As a Dutch politician, I opposed Islam in every way possible. Then, in 2017, I left Parliament and finally had the time to fulfill a long-held desire to write an anti-Islam book. <laughs> I wanted a book that would provide conclusive theoretical groundings for all of the objections I held against Islam as a politician. My book would settle the dispute about Islam with a clear conclusion. Islam is a danger to Europe, to America, to the West and actually to the whole wide world. Absolutely understandable, yet again, the right-wing narrative is that Islam was consistently fighting over Europe, especially to conquer Europe. Look at the Ottoman Empire and we, the Europeans, fought the bad, bad Muslims off over and over and over again. This is why to this very day the same threat exists. This is the narrative in the far right. World. Before writing my book, my view about Islam was influenced by the conservative Protestant environment of my upbringing, in which other religions, and certainly Islam, was definitely seen as wayward and wrong. True. I was also influenced by the cultural aversion towards Islam that many Europeans have, which was a result of their historic clashes with the Islamic world. Yep. And of course, the fears and worries I experienced during years of studying comparative religion at the university formed my opinions. Remarkably, my studies at the university actually began on September 11, 2001. That's crazy. Many horrors would sadly follow inside and outside of Europe, from the murder of columnist Theo van Gogh to kidnappings, anti-Semitic terror and beheadings to haphazard stabs, truck attacks and suicide attacks, to the proclamation of the Caliphate by ISIS. There were even Muslims from the Netherlands who traveled as jihadists to Syria. 
These we had the exact same thing in Germany as well. Many German converts traveled to Syria to fight in the so-called holy wars. Events Jihad. confirmed and yes. deepened my negative feelings about Islam and motivated me to join Wilder's party. I believed that Islam should be fought wherever possible. Mm. But as I began writing my book, I can totally relate, by the way. I came across information that not saying that this is my opinion now, but it used to be was at odds with the ideas I had. I learned that many of my ideas about Islam, stated by Orientalists, far-right Westerners, and even Islamic extremists, had yep. little or no basis in historical Islam. My research often presented me with context and interpretations that were very different from those I had propagated for years in politics. I totally have to agree, and as I mentioned already in my Quran video, I was shocked. I know this sounds ridiculous to Muslims, but for me, somebody that never looked into Islam, never read the Quran, I only had those pre-assumptions that have been fed to me by the far right, by anti-Islamists, by Christian apologetics, etc., etc. I had absolutely no idea what Islam truly was, and I after reading the Quran, I actually started realizing that most Muslims weren't representative of Islam at all. A more nuanced image of Islam slowly developed in my mind. Seeking more information, I wrote to various academic authorities on Islam, including Professor Abdul Hakim Murad of Cambridge University. He pointed out various scholars, books and facts and advised me to read again and more deeply this time. One by one, my objections to Islam vanished. Islam was no longer a religion that promoted violence, hatred and anti-Semitism, or a religion that categorized women and non-believers as inferior humans and stridently opposed democracy. Slowly, With that I cannot agree. I do believe that Islam opposes democracy and I would even say that that is a good thing. I do not agree with our democracy as such a great superior system. Islam on the other hand is a system, a spiritual system, a social system and a political system as well. So therefore I would say that Islam stands in exact opposition to democracy because Islam has its own political system. Please let me know in the comment section what you think about this. My perspective of Islam was changing. I also received surprisingly satisfying Islamic answers to my existing Christian questions about specific dogmas yep. such as the Trinity, the sacrifice of Christ yep. and original sin. All that I was learning about Islam influenced my work on the book in such a way that it began to take on the character of a personal search for God. During this search, the person of Prophet Muhammad raised the most questions with me. Who was this man? A deceiver? An antichrist? Or was he truly, as Muslims believe, the last prophet of God? I started to read again about his life, but now without the previous biases I had. And I saw more than... That's where I'm at right now. ...a man with almost supernatural patience, care, love, guidance, and above all, dedication to his God and to his mission for justice. The arguments against his person and against his prophethood disappeared as I made a comparison with Old Testament prophets. Sure. In fact, I now understood what the 19th century historian Thomas Carlyle meant when he wrote, the lies which well-meaning seal has heaped around this man Muhammad are disgraceful to ourselves only. Like all radical ideologies, the far right is toxic too. It presents a reality that strips away all nuance. It answers real problems with lies, and it fights against a religion, Islam, that is not the enemy. The real enemies are a deficit of empathy and ignorance, like the great philosopher Socrates already said. So let us read, study and learn. Extremism is not the answer. My name is Joram van Klaveren for the Amy Stein Center.
All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. Absolutely fascinating. As I said in the beginning, I can really relate with 99% of his story. I had the same views on Islam. He grew up in the Netherlands. I grew up in Germany. Moreover, my parents are from the Balkan, from North Macedonia. And down there, we had that internal conflict with the Albanians, which were Muslims. So for me, Islam was always violent, no matter if it was the gang violence in Germany, or if it was the Albanian civil war in Macedonia or prior to that, the Ottoman Empire. Islam for me was just violence, nothing more. And this is why I can relate to Yoram, because after I did my own research here as well, I started seeing Islam in a different light. The veil has been lifted, so to speak, and I could appreciate the theology of Islam. And the people that I met that were culturally Muslims weren't Muslims at all in its literal sense. Because if we look into the word Muslim, somebody that submits his will to God, those people were far from. From it. They were not in touch with God. They were not practicing their own religion. They were into sinful behaviors, drugs, violence, promiscuous sex, etc. And none of it I could find in the Quran. None of it I could find in Islam. And this is why I urge everybody to do their own research, no matter if it is religion, politics, nutrition. Do your own research. Don't just listen to people. Don't just take it at face value. We are all ignorant to a certain extent, but the worst of it is if we're ignorant and arrogant paired in one bundle. It's absolutely horrific. And unfortunately, when I look back, I was exactly that. I was not only ignorant, but arrogant. I thought I know it all, not realizing that I was deeply influenced by my environment. Of course, we all are, but we don't realize it. We go throughout life thinking that we can decide Distinguish, but everything has an effect on us. Really think about it, how much you are intertwined with your nationality, with the political education, with the education itself in school, with social media, with Hollywood, etc., etc., you name it. But even daily life experiences that we take at face value. As I said, you simply see certain stereotypes of people and then you generalize. Out of a sudden, Islam is bad, but the reality is you just met some bad people. But my message to the Muslims watching here is you are the representatives. I know that you are not Islam. Muslims will say Islam is perfect, but Muslims are not. Nevertheless, you are the representatives and there is a huge responsibility on your shoulders to be well behaved, to show the people what true Islam is. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.